Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we can talk a little bit more about my travels over in China, all the little adventures and stuff that I had. And today we can talk a little bit about Chinese Comic Cons. I guess in the US there would be more like anime conventions. I think over in China, in Asia, they definitely see anime, what we would call anime, you know, Eastern, like Asian animation and all that. That's what we consider anime. But over there, like, that's just kind of more normal to them. I know this is a bit of a tangent to start off with, but I just kind of thought this was so interesting, you know? From the way that I see it, there's two ways, two different ways to call animation in China. The way I've heard it referred to like Disney movies and I don't know, SpongeBob is like cartoon, which is a loan word of cartoon. But they also have a word for like One Piece and Dragon Ball Z and I just, Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. You would call that Donghua, which I kind of find interesting because over in Japan, they call their uh, their version of comic books is manga. And the way you would say it over in China is a little bit similar. It's manhua. That could mean like a character drawing or a comic drawing or something, you know? Right, so tangent over. Let's talk about the actual Comic Con event. Started off with a rather long bus drive over there. It was in a part of town that was not close to my uh, apartment building. I think it took like 45 minutes to get from point A to point B, or at least the closest I could get from point A to point B. No, I remember distinctly, I got off on the wrong stop and I had to take another bus over there because I was kind of lost and not familiar with the part of town that this Comic Con event uh, was taking place in. You know, it was just me exploring, except I actually had a destination in mind. Uh, something that I paid for. It, it, it was useful to get there as quick as I could, you know? I mean, it wasn't that horribly expensive to get a ticket to this convention. Over here in the United States, it might cost something like 20 or $40 for a one or two day event, but you kind of have the equivalent of that over in China. I believe I paid 30 or so yuan, which is roughly, uh, let me do the math, a little over four US dollars just to go to a one day event. That sounds like a good deal, except we're dealing with China money and 30 yuan is enough for a really good meal. Like not fancy or anything, but like I, something you would get at Applebee's or something. I don't know. But eventually I got there because I was following some people already in cosplay already. And really the only cosplay that I brought was not burger. It was my buddy Gregor right here. I was carrying him with me um, in like, some sort of oversized shopping bag, the, the cloth kind that they give you to reduce recycling the plastic bags and all that. And he was in there along with the, the hand paws and the tail. I believe the tail is already on my belt. No, I think I put it on later. Anyway, I was partialing. And once I finally got to the bus stop at my location, I found out it was a bit fenced in and you had to pass through a bunch of like auto repair garages and stuff just to get in there. By the way, the only reason the footage that you're seeing is so shaky and kind of awful is because I decided to try a selfie stick for the first time. I didn't want to bring my expensive actual camera with me. I kind of felt like being a little bit experimental and using a selfie stick and just the camera on my Chinese smartphone. And while the picture quality was okay, turns out you probably should not buy a selfie stick right from a convenience store because those things are god awfully cheap in a bad way. Moral of the story there is that if you're gonna get something worth getting, buy it at a decent price and not at a convenience store, unless it's something that is so ordinary and common that you might as well do that already. Anyway, walking past a bunch of little uh, auto repair garages and stuff, I finally get over to the entrance to the event. This is what my ticket looked like, by the way. And here's the back. All right, so they call out to me and say, hey, over here, over here, over here, man, over here. Hello. Hello. They actually talk to me in English. I should mention that the way I found out about this event in the first place was a little poster with a QR code to a, uh, a QQ chat group just for the people attending the convention. If you didn't know, QQ is the result of a Chinese version of ICQ, an old chat program. And then they just kept adding on to it and adding on to it until it became its own program. And for some reason they use a penguin mascot similar to Linux, but it's not the actual Linux penguin. It's a different penguin. Really, they're not stealing anything. Trust me. 
<laughs> so some of the organizers for the events, the ones that could speak English, were talking with me after I explained that I was a a white Goren <laughs> that could only speak Yitian Zhongwen. They helped me with the payment process. They gave me directions to the place. I'm guessing some of them were working the front desk outside the entrance there. So that was always helpful. Yes. Although I figured I was probably the first ever foreigner to just show up there. I'll get into this later, but there were people that just kind of stopped me and said, Hey, you're a foreigner. You're here. Like the only one here. Can I just get your photo? The second thing I noticed is that this is basically just some auto repair garage thing. Completely emptied out, like a giant empty warehouse thing, just suited for a little comic market slash stage performance area. And it was very homely and compact. Kind of like most of China, really. I mean, what are you gonna do when you have one billion citizens in your country? And most of that is spread out on like half of the country in the most popular cities, basically. There was an upstairs area where people were working on their costumes and all that. I guess that was just the, the cosplay setup area up there. Nowhere else to really sit down and eat, even though they had food and snacks and drinks and all that. I ran into a little bit of trouble with that because the 4G signal was pretty bad and I don't carry cash money at all when I'm in China because it's so much easier to just use your phone to pay with something like WeChat Pay or Alipay. I basically walked around in China 99% of the time with no wallet, just my phone and my keys and like maybe a charger cable or something i don't know it truly is the future over in china because even the street vendors have little qr codes for your wechat pay and alipay but that is if you can connect to the internet or wi-fi or 4g signal and i had a little bit of trouble with that inside this warehouse go figure but you know i eventually got wi-fi signal and paid for my stuff and then it was all good yeah it's all good. I think it got a lot more eyes on me once I first put on that fursuit. I mean, fursuiting is a form of cosplay, but it's probably not a cosplay they're used to seeing at their event. And even though this is just some small local event, there were a lot of people that really worked on their cosplay game. There were some pretty cool costumes all around. I'll go ahead and show a bunch here on the screen in a little slideshow, I guess. And here's something that's a little bit different from your usual Western or American, from my perspective, conventions. There were a lot of kids there. And by kids, I mean people under the age of 18. By themselves, no parents or guardians, just by themselves with their friends. And they're, the, the people running this con thing, they were okay with that. And that's a little weird. I mean, it's not bad, it's just weird. The reason that you keep kids within parents' uh, view, for the most part, at a convention is because kids can be rowdy, but I guess because Chinese and most Asian cultures expect more conformity and all that. They just knew to behave a little bit better when they're not within their parents' reach. I mean, I, hell, I, I saw little kids doing errands for their parents, no supervision, just on the streets, even late at night, outside of this convention, just regular everyday things. That's, that's so weird to me, you know? It also made that kind of weird because some of them really wanted to be friends with me. And I don't have a problem being friends with people under the age of 18 or even under the age of 21, the drinking age here in the USA. But like, I felt like some of them had crushes on me. I'm just not used to that at all. I'm sorry, I, it, it was a bit flattering, but then again, I was in a position where I could seriously take advantage of that, not just as a foreigner, but as someone that was way older than them by at least a decade. And that just doesn't, sit right with me. I mean, heck, I taught English to little kids in elementary school age, in pre-K age. This, this is just a weird situation, you know, adds to the fact that no one has really showed me romantic interest that I've noticed, or even sexual interest that I've noticed for the longest time when I was growing up. And now suddenly I'm in a foreign country, very homogenous, like 92 to 93% homogenous, and I'm suddenly there and I'm treated different as maybe a romantic or sexual interest or just, you know, a special person. Hey, 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 I'm, I should move on. You, you understand my situation. You know, 
I, I kept my distance. I'll go ahead and show you my merch that I got. It wasn't actually that much. I had to take some of the stuff home with me. And that might be difficult if it's something too big. So one of the things I actually just gave it to a friend. I'll have to ask if they can take a picture of it later. There's a little fan that you could just wave at yourself. I also got this little stand of Toru from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. It's always cool. Just as a little bit of a gag gift to myself. I got this very anime looking sleeping mask thing. I've never worn it. I've only used it for like a silly photo here and there. I'll have to give it to someone actually. I, I don't use sleeping masks at all. For me personally, complete darkness, trying to sleep in that, scares the hell out of me. I need some sort of soft light or background noise just to keep me sane and sleeping well. I also have just the random button and car things of art, whatever. Those were more like freebies anyway. Speaking of freebies, one person just decided to gift me some cotton candy. And hey, it's been a while since I've had cotton candy. Not since I've been to like the Texas State Fair, I think. And it was, you know, it was pretty good. Except I had to wash my hands thoroughly just because I had a fursuit. And that sticky stuff was going to be very sticky on my costume that I did not want sticky. Now, outside of shopping and photos, there was the stage. And on the stage, you could do anything if you asked them, I guess. I think it was just kind of an open renegade stage thing. Like, there are people just doing karaoke, doing dances. There was an MC there that did little skits and audience participation. I didn't understand Jack 99.8% of the time because, like, it was all in Chinese. And I still have just a basic understanding of the language. But one or two of the people that was managing this uh, little renegade stage area asked me if I wanted to perform or do anything special. Yeah, I said, okay, I'll do that. Uh, I didn't know what I was really doing. I hadn't prepared anything, anything. I did not prepare anything at all. But I decided to go along with it to put on a little show because, you know, it just felt a little bit special to do that. Usually if it's just a little simple song and dance that I don't have to think too much about, you know, I'll perform for people. It's fine. What happened was I was trying to pick a certain song from Clarice. I actually wanted to pick the song that they used for the opening for Oremo, but I showed them the wrong one and instead got the opening for Madoka. But eh, it works. Clarice is a good group. I tried to get a full video of this performance, but it kind of cut off and interrupted with the girl trying to change camera perspectives and all that. You know, so I don't think the speakers themselves were this distorted. I think that's just how it was captured on my cell phone camera thing, on the speakers there. Which kind of sucks, because, man, this sound quality was pretty bad. And of course they did decide to behead me of all things. Show off that, hey, look at this foreigner. We got a foreigner here in our convention. Whoa! It, it's cute, whatever, it's cute. And of course they try to interview me and stuff. And like, I was just trying to show off my basic Chinese and all that, you know? One of the stage volunteers helped me out a little bit. But after that, I kind of went along my way. <laughs> By the way, the teenagers or whoever that did speak English, they wanted to know about America. Specifically Trump didn't expect to have that conversation with the random Chinese teenager, especially in English. Just, they would just come up to be like, hey, hey, what? tell me about America. Do you like Obama? Do you like Trump? And I was just like, trying to answer them as best as I could. I tried to keep my English a little bit simplified just because 
They're probably not used to native English. They're probably more used to the English that they learned in school, which is a more basic and simplified and academic kind. So I tried to stick with that vocabulary. If some of them didn't speak quite well English, you could just talk to people on WeChat and the WeChat would help you translate from English to Chinese or Chinese to English. So it was all good there. Technology is amazing. And China is in the future in some respects. After that, I went to a little part of town called, uh, was it Mudu? Yeah, it was Mudu. Walked around a little shopping mall, ate some food. But I also went to this little park they had nearby in Mudu. It was like this really beautiful looking place, but it was getting dark. And with my Chinese smartphone, it has a really bad time dealing with low light and dark settings. So didn't really look all that useful, but it did have a fun time. And that was how I survived my first Chinese anime con slash comic con. The fact that it was only a one day experience, it didn't bother me that much. They have like little events and gatherings like across the month in different little parts of the city that I was in. Unfortunately, it was tough to get time off to go to these events just because I work on weekends and all that. And I kind of needed a justified reason and to shift my schedule drastically at some points just to get these little weekend getaways. Ah, the life of an after-school teacher. But yeah, that seems like a pretty cool experience to me, so... I don't know, what do you think? Do you have any other questions about Chinese Comic Cons and all that that I may have missed? Until then, this has been Lightning Runner as Burger the Bull. I'm gonna try and do more Chinese adventure stories and travel stories and all that at least once a month, along with my How Furry reviews. I have some social media down in the description. That would be my Twitter and my Telegram and my Instagram. I have my own personal Discord server. You can join that too. It's available to the public, but I also have a Patreon and I have certain perks for my Patreon users on my Discord server. If you wanna just give me some change anyway, that's fine as well. Again, all of that is in the description, my social media, my Discord server, and my Patreon. Go ahead and check it out if you want after watching this video, of course. And you can always Throw down a like and subscribe and all that. Make sure you watch a couple more videos beforehand before you fully subscribe to my channel. Just to give you an idea of what my channel is like. Not that there's anything bad on my channel. I mean, there's some cringy stuff that when I was first starting out, but you know, you grow and you change after a while. Anyway, good seeing you guys. I'll probably talk to you guys later. Talking about my trip over to South Korea, maybe? Yeah, let's go with that. I don't know, anyway. See ya. Time to realize. <laughs>